It wasn't my usual sort of hotel. I like the big chains. There's a reliability to them. And more than anything else, that's what I want a night away from home. Even if the reliability is just, yep, someone's been smoking weed in the stairwell again, at least it's familiar. At the end of a travel day, I'm not looking for surprises. Tried and true, that's the way to go. Unfortunately that day, I didn't have much of a choice. My flight was cancelled, and while the airline was of course very apologetic, it was already approaching midnight, and my options were to either spend the night in the airport, or go to the only nearby hotel that still had rooms available. I've slept on airport couches before, and it's a guaranteed way to end up with a crick in my neck for a week afterward. So off to the mystery hotel I went. It looked nice enough for what it was. It was one of those roadside deals with a bunch of single-story rooms all surrounding a central parking lot, with the lobby lurking at the center of it all. The parking lot was well lit though, and the exterior was in good repair. It backed into a sizable forest instead of another road, which dampened the sound and meant I might actually get a good night's rest without my earplugs. Despite the late hour, the man behind the desk was alert and smiling, which I took to mean that he had just started to shift. He accepted the airline voucher, handed me a key, and pointed me to my room. It was an actual physical key, not just a plastic card, but when I unlocked the room, I was pleasantly surprised to find that it was clean and well maintained. Like the lock, it didn't appear to have been updated in the last few decades, but I was only planning to sleep there, not host a party. I was a little concerned about whether the mattress was also original to the room, but when I laid down on it, it felt perfectly comfortable. I turned out the lights and was asleep within minutes. I slept through the night perfectly well, but I woke up the next morning with a stiff neck and back. A few minutes of stretching limbered everything up well enough to get me going, though I knew that the flight home would make it worse. Still, at least I'd be back in my own bed after that. I could deal with the discomfort for a day. The flight home was fine, although I think I bothered my seatmate with how much I spent turning my head back and forth, trying to work out the stiffness. It felt like my neck wanted to pop, but I couldn't quite get to that point. I knew if I could just get it to crack, it would feel better. It remained elusive, right at the edge of relief, and we landed with that same nagging stiffness still plaguing me. My back popped a couple of times when I stood up, and at least that felt better until the ride back home through midday traffic tightened it right back up again. I ended up getting out the yoga mat when I got home, and started trying out some stretches to get everything to release. It was much better by the time I went to bed, and I figured it would be back to normal by the next morning. It was much worse. I woke up feeling like my entire body had calcified overnight. My neck did pop as I rolled it back and forth on the pillow, but it wasn't enough to relieve any of the stiffness. It was more like breaking the ice on a frozen rope. My back crackled as I rolled out of bed, and even my toes popped as I stood up. Weirdly, I could still bend over and touch the floor, despite how stiff I felt. I could touch my chin to my shoulder on either side, too. There didn't actually seem to be any loss of motion associated with this. If anything, I was slightly more flexible than usual. But everything felt tight and unyielding no matter how much I worked at it. The following day was worse again. When I woke up and stretched, my shoulders, elbows, and even wrists popped as I forced them into motion. I clenched my hands with a sound like crunching bubble wrap. Windmilling my arms for a while released the tension in most of the joints, but I ended up having to pull on my fingers to get the last pop out of each of them. It was fiercely satisfying when it happened. My neck was still the biggest problem. I did get it to crack by turning it rapidly from left to right, but although that eased the tension slightly, I could feel that there was still more to go. It simply would not loosen up. And while it wasn't exactly painful, it was a constant nagging annoyance throughout my day. I made an appointment with my doctor, but by the time I got in to see her, it had been weeks. I'd honestly felt a little silly making the appointment, figuring that the problem would have resolved itself well before there was an opening in her schedule. As the days wore on though, it only got worse. No matter how much I stretched, no matter what I tried, everything just felt more stiff every day. Muscle relaxers did nothing. I tried heat, I tried ice baths, I tried tea, I went for long walks, I spent an entire weekend not getting out of bed. I was on the yoga mat for hours most days, but still the stiffness persisted. Through it all, my neck was the worst. I worked and worked at it, but I could not get it to pop like I wanted. My doctor's reaction was not what I expected. She asked me to show her the problem, so I demonstrated. I flexed my hands, listening to the symphony of cracks from my fingers. I clasped my hands behind my backs, eliciting loud pops from my shoulders. I swung my head from side to side. I could still feel that elusive crack I wanted from my neck just out of reach. 
do that again, said my doctor. I turned my head back and forth once more. Wait here. She left the room and came back pushing a metal stand. It had a platform for my feet and an extendable metal rod with a brace that ran up my back. The top had a pair of thin metal arms that she swiveled in to rest against my cheeks as I looked forward. Okay, now turn your head for me one more time, as far as you can to each side. The brace held my shoulders in place as I rotated my head. The stretch felt good, but my neck still stubbornly refused to release its tension. I stepped away from the device, and my doctor examined the metal arms, which had sung to either side as I moved my head. This is impossible, she said. She motioned to the device. You've got almost 240 degrees of motion. What am I supposed to have? 160, maybe 180. She moved the arms to demonstrate. This is what a normal person's range of motion looks like. What you're doing is so far beyond that, honestly, it shouldn't be possible. It still feels stiff, though. Stiff? You're flexible well past anything I've ever seen. I want to get you in for a scan. In fact, I'm worried that something's gone wrong to allow you to turn your head that much. She scribbled something on a piece of paper. Take that to the front desk and they'll set you up. It probably won't be for a few days. Until then, I don't want you messing with your neck at all. No massaging, no stretching, and definitely no more popping it. Something's very wrong. You could end up paralyzed. Or dead. I tried to follow her advice. I even wore the neck brace that she gave me for several hours, until I couldn't stand it anymore. When I ripped it off, the relief was instant. I kneaded at my neck, feeling the soothing popping of my knuckles against muscle, and I whipped my head back and forth. She was right. I really could see concerningly far over my shoulder. It still wasn't enough, though. There was more to go. I could feel it. I dreamed that night of the thick, dark woods that had loomed behind that hotel, the place that had started it all. Dozens of pairs of glittering eyes stared at me from behind the trees, beckoning me to join them. I opened my window and climbed down from the second story, head first like a lizard or spider, my long stretched fingers gripping the siding easily, as did my hooked toes. My legs and arms were spread wide to distribute my weight. My neck was bent back, much too far back. It felt amazing. I ran with the others in the woods, our bent bodies twisting from tree to tree. We flowed up and around them, racing across branches and scuttling over the ground. No solid obstacle could stand in our way. The night wind whipped against us, urging us to ever greater speeds. We startled a deer from its resting place. It was bounding away from us, but we were faster still, surrounding and downing it. When I leapt onto it and twisted its head around backward, the crack I heard was almost sinfully pleasurable. It was the pop I had been waiting to hear from my own neck all this time. I was close, so close. We feasted on the deer, digging into its belly with our strong, sharp fingers, its entrails steaming in the night air. When we had eaten our fill, we scuttled off into the night, squeezing ourselves into cracks and caves, our flexible, wonderful bodies bending to allow us into any space. I fell asleep in the tight embrace of a hollow tree barely as big around as my neck, feeling right for the first time in weeks. I woke up in my own bed, with no blood on my hands and no dirt on my feet. The woods were behind the hotel and not behind my own house, but my bedroom window was open and there were marks on the siding as if something large had been climbing there. I stretched and flexed, listening to the beautiful crackle of my joints. I bent over backward, arching my back until I could touch the heels of my palms to my ankles, and I swung my neck back and forth, smiling as I felt it stretch. Soon, I would hear that final pop. Soon, I would be running with the others in the woods. I'm not quite flexible enough yet, but soon.